Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are watching the world. My name is Sean Driver. This is the Red Horde, and again, we're going back to it. The Who Are You series, this time stepping up Crew Alexandra. So the question remains... Let's get into it. Crew Alexander up tomorrow, and there's a consequence of me being sick and having my world be very busy. I apologize. I'm going to sound rasp. I'm probably going to end up having to edit this and uh, cough <laughs> repeatedly off uh, off camera and cut this out. So I apologize for the delay. It was not intentional, uh, but the research has been done, and I thought, okay, well, we're going to have to get this out. Watch Party will be on tomorrow, so make sure you stay tuned for that. And if you end up enjoying this, uh, always hit the subscribe button below. So jumping right into it. Um, Crew Alexander FC, nickname, the Railway Men, sometimes referred to as the Alex, according to Wiki, although I've never heard that. Um, location, crew uh, in Cheshire, population 76,437. And their stadium, Cresty Road, or for sponsorship reasons, known as Mornflake Stadium. Open 1906, attendance 10,153. Last year, they uh, averaged an attendance of 4,289, which put them 15th overall in League 2. Distance away from the race course, this one, a close one, obviously, for people who know the location. 29 miles or 47 kilometers, that's just a 45-minute jaunt by car if you're uh, looking to make the trip. So, turnover, 5,743,600 quid, that was self-reported. And now, I'm going to get into the story of crew. I will say this as a sort of sidebar. It was interesting watching the numbers as they related to Stockport. We're going to forget about that game. Hopefully, that's a one-off and uh, upwards and onwards from there. But, it was interesting to see the stats on the videos because man did I have a lot of Stockport fans end up picking apart the last video so um, anyways I source all this information from Google I admit that I'm a plastic fan but I do the research and I try to figure it out so I still think there's value for it I will also add this if you haven't been to the race course ramble I'll add the, the link down to before, below they did an exceptional analysis where they end up breaking down the video and the highlights and that sort of stuff I found it very insightful you probably will too have a look at it very good stuff um, so crew jumping into them formed in 1887 as part of crew Alexandra Cricket Club the Alexandra in the name being Princess Alexandra Princess of Wales eventually Queen Empress um, maybe that's useless information I don't know um, as I think that the only other teams named after royalty in the EF FL are the Queen's Park Rangers but if other people have names that uh, they've been able to source out otherwise by all means s put them down below anyway uh, second division when it was created back in 19 oh or sorry 1892 uh, crew were in uh, but after back-to-back -back bottom finishes they ended up uh, not being re-elected in 1895 1896 they were re-invited back into the EFL with their creation of the third division in 1921 and they lived there uh, for an extended period basically until 1957 58 uh, from there bounced Back up to the third tier, 62-63. Uh, back down to the fourth tier the year after. Uh, up to the third tier in 67-68. Then back down to the fourth tier the year after. Then up to the third tier in 88-89. And then back down to the fourth tier just two years later. So they've had that little run through. Um, and then they had a stretch where they their, their largest stretch of success was they were promoted to the third tier in 93-94. Then up to the second tier in 96-97 and eight of the nine, next nine years they were in that second tier they did have uh, a relegation year but they were subsequently promoted the year following and that ended in 2005-2006 and then between then and today's date they've basically been back and forth between the third and fourth tier um, their most recent um, relegation being uh, two seasons ago so not a team that's fallen out of the EFL for an extended period of time and only as a consequence of those uh, games way back in the 1800s. So um, oddity for them as far as uh, things go. Put eight promotions, but never champions. Uh, twice they finished second, twice they finished third, twice they finished fourth, and twice as the playoff winners. So still looking for that major championship, I guess you could say. As far as major cups, uh, the Football League Trophy, now known as the Pizza Cup Colloquial, colloquially, that was in 2012-2013. As to their kit, uh, red with dark vertical, darker red vertical stripes, uh, a sort of a new take with their away jersey. It's a greenish black geometric pattern, and then a solid black away jersey that that I quite like um that kind of looks like a polo shirt but uh, they're okay as far as jerseys go there have been there are better than I think in the league there are worse personal opinion what does it matter uh that's the case bookie odds at the start of the season had them finishing as a 20th place club that put them uh 
considered to be in the bottom third, but they're performing much better than that, being uh, just one possession position ahead of us in the standings. So performance, uh, this so far this year, they were knocked out of the EFL Cup in the second round on penalties. Uh, they had an impressive penalty win against Sunderland. Uh, and then crew managed to go zero for four in penalty kicks to their rivals, uh, Port Vale. And they've had a couple of games with Port Vale and being in the trophy, same group with Port Vale and with us, uh, lots of games against Port Vale and against Wrexham coming up here. There will be at least two more over the course of the year uh, following this one. Uh, in the EFL Trophy, obviously, as I said, in the same group as Wrexham, uh, they lost their first game 1-0 against Port Vale. Uh, that included a second half injury time, which I think was a send-off for two uh, yellow cars that happened late in the game. Um, I do understand that when you have a send-off uh, with FA regulations, that means that Cooney will be unavailable in the next Wrexham match, the EFL Trophy match, but he is going to be available in this one should... Uh, crew decide to go with them overall record in the league uh, four wins four draws one loss 16 points that's sixth place obviously one ahead of us their last five games three wins one draw one loss and they're working on a five game unbeaten streak um, their last five games just to go through what the analytics say about them um, you know this is it's interesting with Crew. Uh, the team that scores first means nothing in their games. Uh, it's been sort of all over the place. But they had a two-one win at home against Colchester. Uh, they were uh, Crew was up two before the ten-minute mark, and then just rode that to their three points. The analytics are a bit thrown off, really, because when you go up two points that early, you end up giving away possession, uh, as you can anticipate. You'd expect uh, the team to be chasing, to be more active, and it looks like that that was the case. Both. Uh, Colchester led in ball possession. They loaded. They led in total shots, uh, but Crew did have the big advantage when it came to big chances and expected goals. So really, that 2-1 result against Colchester certainly appears to be a fair result. The second game, a 2-2 draw against F AFC Wimbledon. Uh, they had a late equalizer. Crew did uh, scoring in the tenth minute of injury time, uh, coming back from 2-0 down uh, at, in the second half. They they basically, I would suggest, stole one here. They were outshot 22-8. They were outchanced ch as far as big chances is two to one um, and they were behind in expected goals so fortunate to get one point out of that one third game uh, a 4-1 win against Forest Green Rovers uh, went down by one and then uh, filled the net from there with four uh, they dominated really everything except for possession uh, but they doubled Forest Green Rovers in shots they had way more big chances uh, the score may be slightly inflated if you look at uh, unexpected goals but really it looks like that was a game that they were firmly in control throughout uh, fourth game was a 3-1 win at home against the MK Dons. They went down one early and then came back with three. And again, another uh, comeback uh, and an obvious one. Uh, didn't matter who scored first. And sort of the analytics say that that was a deserved outcome. Uh, they, they led in... Um, expected goals, shots, possession, and big chances. The fifth game, uh, one nothing loss to Bradford. Um, really nothing to show for in this match. Uh, Bradford scored just before the first half. It appears to be a deserved result. Um, they were ahead in possession, but uh, behind in shots and big chances. And so you take that on a go forward basis. Uh, they probably deserve that one. So stats for the season, they score a lot. Um, way above the expected goals uh, value. Um, I expect fireworks in this game. Uh, that's simply because when you have a team that's averaging almost four goals in their, the games that they're involved in, Wrexham's got four and a half goals as an average in the games they're involved in. No clean sheets to date for crew, uh, and they take a lot of shots. So they've, they've got a top third conversion rate, and, and that always means one thing when you have that top third conversion rate, is it either means they're lucky, or they just develop consistent dangerous chances. And um, we're going to have to find out what uh, the truth is, or at least a one-game version of the truth is, when we play them. So you can see the stats uh, that are up on the screen right there. Last match before Wrexham, and this is the longest far back, way back machine uh, venture that I recall we, uh, having to take so far. August 12th, 2003. Uh, that was a 2 nothing loss in Crew in front of 3,152 in the EFL Cup. Crew uh, was in the middle of the second tier at that time, or finished in the second tier. Uh, Wrexham finished in the middle of the third tier uh, that year. And the, that, this is the longest time between matches. 7,354 7, days. Uh, so that's basically 20 years and a month. More than two decades since we've had a game with Crew who's 
right down the road. Uh, connections to Wrexham, James Jones, uh, an academy at uh, re which re reputable academy. You see, they they have a lot of club developed talent, a lot of club developed talent that ends up moving elsewhere. Uh, crews definitely set themselves up for uh, reward, and I, I suggest you have to be when you have a turnover that they have to be competitive in who they are. Um, so kudos to them for having that academy set up. But James played 167 games between 2014 and 2020 before moving to Lincoln City and then eventually to Wrexham. Uh, Callum McVadson uh, also had just a, a, a cup of coffee with crew 10 games in 2021 2022 before uh, joining the red dragons last season performance 13th 14 wins 16 draws 16 losses 58 points that put them squarely in the middle in their first uh season back into league two uh, the gaffer, Lee Bell. So he's 40, uh, developed in the reputable uh, uh, Crew Academy. Uh, he had two long stints with Crew, and then on retirement eight years ago, went back to the academy and started as a coach. He was with the U18s as a coach, then the U18 as a manager, then up to the U23s as a manager, and then he became the first team assistant manager in April of last year, and then took over interim management in November of 2022 last year, uh, before he was given the full job in December. 44 games as manager of of crew for 15 wins 15 draws 14 losses looking at the roster then um, not a lot of changes over the season not a lot of new players that have come in uh, certainly there are a couple but this is a team that has been sort of around now for a, a second year so they're gonna have uh, some familiarity with each other they've had three players that have started all nine league games and played every minute that's their goalkeeper uh, Harvey Davies defender Mickey Demetrio and another defender Luke Offord they've had four other players who have started every game and played almost every minute uh, leading goalie or leading scorer Chris Long uh, midfielder Joel Tabiner um, and a midfielder slash defender Rio at a BC and uh, another midfielder Jack Powell so likely to see uh, Zach Williams young Welsh defender um, he started every game but he seems to come out just at halftime or shortly thereafter uh, and then I'm also going to have a little bit of a focus on Elliot Nevitt um, he started eight um, but also been an early substitute out he's got four goals in the limited minutes that he's had and is at a 0 0.85 goals per 90 minutes that is uh, an impressive number um, by any stretch so just going to look at the forwards here for a second and I was it was suggested to bring up Wrexham comparison so I'm going to do that I'll bring up the picture of the player bring up their stats and then show you someone some of the uh, players that are with Wrexham as an offset um, so Chris Long five goals in the league uh, not a lot of shots he's only in the 78th percentile when it comes to shots not very accurate with his shots he's in the 76th percentile but you look at that conversion rate when he's on target um, they tend to go in 92nd percentile so uh, I guess you kind of miss that he hopes that you hope he misses uh, more than he lands because when he does land there's a high chance that it goes in having a look and comparing him just to Ollie Palmer um, and and his games you look at the shots taken and Ollie's had uh, limited um, minutes compared to Mr. Long but shots taken 15 uh, compared to 10 shots on target Ollie's got uh, got a, a hot, much better rate as far as being on target the big difference though is that shot conversion rate you look at Chris Long sitting at 30 percent and you look at Ollie at 13.33 percent in the 69th percentile and remembering those percentiles are compared to position players in any position so that's defenders uh, midfielders and uh, the goalkeepers are even on there so that shot conversion rate uh, not doing what we would want it to be as far as Ollie's concerned but also exceptionally high uh, when it comes to Mr. Long. The other forward that I'm just going to highlight, uh, Courtney Baker Richardson, 27. He's played 414 minutes. Uh, the reason I highlight him is because he's got a, an even crazier shot conversion rate. Uh, not a lot of shots, nine, six on target, but um, wow, that 33.33% uh, shot conversion rate is uh, dangerous. And uh, so, yeah, we'll see if that's just uh, fortuitous, whether he's got a bit of luck on his side or whether he's just able to when the, the opportunity presents itself to find the back of the net um, two other forwards that we may also see Shiloh Tracy he's more of a winger uh, 25 550 goals zero goals three assists you look at his statistics going backwards uh, lots of assists not a lot of goals so that seems to be uh, his setup play and Elliot Nevitt who I just talked about four goals as a 27 year old at 425 minutes um, in the midfield Joel Tabiner 19 782 minutes uh young guy so less on analytics but I did want to flag a quote that I ended up finding uh from last year October 2022 when the previous manager said that they had to be careful with him uh looking at the picture he doesn't look like a, a necessarily robust individual but it says he's not going to last games yet 
He's an 18 year old boy and we've got to make sure that we do not break him along the way. Um, so I, th I found that to be an, an odd quote to make about one of your players uh, to basically say he's got to not just got to make sure we don't break him. But, um, you know, he's still a professional and uh, and he's, to be fair, he's been doing well. Uh, obviously, the new manager uh, not uh, adhering to the previous views of Mr. Morris and making sure that uh, He's out there for a lot of minutes, 782 out of a possible 810. Um, also in the midfield, Rio Adebisi, 776 minutes, 22, another club developed player. A lot of these guys are club developed. Um, you look at his statistics and, and nothing really to sneeze at. Um, I don't get it. You look at his, his passes, he's, he's not near the top of the list in that. You look at his successful passes, even worse. His pass completion rate is 18th percentile. Um, that's not good. Key passes, crosses, that's normally where you end up seeing the numbers even decline because key passes and crosses are harder to, uh, to establish. Um, but he's, he's struggling in the middle, of the middle of the league when it comes to that. Um, just to compare him to somebody on the team and then we'll come back and look at Elliot Lee. Uh, Jack Powell, club developed again. Um, odd that it looks like he's had two games, two years away from playing at, uh, in total. Uh, I don't know why, if somebody has an idea as to why Mr. Powell was away for two years, maybe it was injury, maybe he was taking a break, but he's had a bit of a renaissance, uh, no goals, but he's in there with the assists. You look at his expected assists, his passing, successful passes, um, his key passes, he's doing quite well, uh, all things told. And I say that because what I'll do is I'll bring up Mr. Lee's, uh, numbers and you can look at it. when it comes to assists they're on par expected assists they're pretty close um, and their passes and successful passes and pass completion rate um jacks powell's outpacing elliot lee which is evidence of some good work by the uh by the crew midfielder when it comes to crosses uh successful crosses and cross completion rate certainly comparable and so J jack powell seems to be having himself a season so we'll see what that looks like when we get to the game and uh the back line M mickey dimitrio 33 810 minutes as i said he's uh one of the rare additions to the club uh he's in from not newport county uh, not a lot of tackles but you look at ground duels 92nd percent aerial duels one 99th percentile he's up there with clearances up for shot blocks and before i end up going to luke offered i'm actually going to bring up uh, ben tozer for a comparison and you end up looking at those numbers and uh, what stands out for me tozer's a little bit behind on uh on aerial duels, that's for sure. Um, a little bit behind on clearances and shots blocked, but man, those ground duels and ground duels won. Whew, that's a big divide. And whether that's evidence that Tozer's just not having a good year, and let's be fair if we're going to assess it, we've had trouble with guys running at us uh, on the ground. It hasn't been a problem through the air. It's been that direct play uh, that's been coming at us and crossing us off. So, um, Mickey Dimitro seems to have the stats, uh, the step down from him, Luke offered, and maybe because of age 23, but he's played 810 minutes. And you look at his numbers and compare those to Ben Tozer. He's, he's higher in tackles. He's got an increase in interceptions. His ground duels, one, not quite as remarkable as Mickey Dimitrio, but certainly uh, much better than Mr. Tozer. Uh, Ariel's duels, one, 89th percentile. He, again, young, but seems to be more than capable in the back. I'm going to look at uh, Harvey Davies, uh, the 20 year old who's on loan from Liverpool, who's had all of the minutes for crew so far. Uh, shots faced 40. That's high compared to most uh, goaltenders. Saves 27. Also high, but a bit of a step down, which is indicative of why you've got a big divide in the save percentage at 67.50%. It's really hard with goaltenders because there doesn't seem to be a stat that measures the quality of the shots um, and whether there's been big saves or non-big saves. It, it, it's You almost need that with, with respect to the goaltenders. I looked at Mark Howard's stats. They're uh, incomplete and sort of difficult to, to draw a comparison from. Harvey looks like he's got all of the tools. He might have had some challenges settling in, um, but obviously as a 20-year-old on loan from Liverpool, he's not going to be with crew unless he's got the talent and the skill set to be there. So as we normally do at this time, and we enter into the world of controversy where I get the most comments from the opposing fans who jump in and end up making suggestions about my qualities and capacities to make these videos as a plastic fan, um, 
I look at a North American sports team that you can compare Crew Alexandra to, and uh, you know this is uh, there's a rivalry here. Um, I don't know why it's stronger than say the Tranmere one or the Stockport County one, uh, but it seems to me that there seem th there's more antipathy between the two clubs, whether that's geographical pro proximity or otherwise. So call this the Bengals and the Browns. Call this you know what pick whatever sports team is closest to you, Rangers and the and the Islanders or the Devils, uh, but. The Battle of Alberta, Alberta and and, and the uh, Edmonton and, and Calgary. Pick the sports team that is geographically proximate to yours that you detest, and that's probably Crew Alexandra. Um, as I see it, as far as comparing them to a food, they're a staple, um, and I say that because they have an academy that fills their front, f their their top team. They develop without necessarily inflating their turnover by any capacity and bringing in big signings. Uh, they seem to be, I guess, a North American team, somebody who just drafts well and continues to rebuild and retool, sort of like the Carolina Hurricanes, I guess, in, in hockey, who seems to just have a knack for, for, for drafting um, and rebuilding, maybe potentially in the NFL, who's been up there for a long time, the Green Bay Packers. Um, who tend to be competitive, even being a smaller club, and they can certainly assert themselves. Uh, so they got to give crew respect in that regard. Uh, they've they they do more with less. So, anyways, we're here tomorrow. If you enjoyed this one, hit the subscribe button. Just another friendly reminder. Uh, I apologize again for getting this out. I'm surprised I didn't have to edit this as much. I guess if I'm talking a lot, I don't have to cough as much. Uh, hopefully, I'm good for tomorrow. If not, you'll get this growly tone. It is what it is. Thanks for joining us. This is the Red Horde. Uh, we'll see you.